Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Disney Channel show, a Disney Channel show that just ended tonight, Andy Mack. So seeing as this is my last opportunity to really talk about the show, I did want to make a video on it. Just because I think the show is really important for kids and not actually, not just for kids, just for people in general. Just, yeah, I just want to talk about it. So. I'm way past the Disney Channel age uh, group. <laughs> I'm 20 years old. So I stopped watching Disney a while ago. I remember um, I kept watching Disney like briefly for Girl Meets World because that show had started while I was on it and I just like to finish shows when I start them. And Andy Mack was starting around the time that that show ended and so I was seeing advertisements for it and I was like, oh, that's really cool. They have an Asian main character and she has a pixie cut. That's awesome. But I never actually, wa I actually watched the first episode and the show immediately floored me because I was like, wow, teen pregnancy, what? Like they had in the first episode, they reveal that Andy's sister is actually her mother and she was just very young and very unprepared to have a child. And so her, she, Andy was raised by her grandparents. And so that alone is indicative of how, um, not necessarily progressive, but just uh, unique the show is in terms of the storylines that they explore, especially on Disney Channel. And I love Disney so much, but it's undeniable that that is, Disney is very, very heavily censored. They work very hard to not lean in one direction or the other. They like to stay in the middle and stay neutral. That's another, I mean, that problem did arise, like if, for example, on the show Roseanne on ABC. When they brought Roseanne back, of course, the main character, Roseanne, she was, she's very uh, conservative, very uh, like vocal about that. And, but there are other characters in the show that were very liberal and so it was balanced. And when Disney canceled Roseanne, it was a very tricky situation um, because of the comments that she made. And the, the part of the reason why it was so difficult to navigate that conversation was because they were trying to stay neutral. And that's just one example of how Disney, especially with their network programs, try to stay as neutral as possible in terms of societal problems. Let's just put it that way. But this show has single-handedly, I think, been the most progressive thing we've gotten on Disney Channel since maybe That's So Raven. And even that show explored a lot, but it still had its limits, you know? And I just think Andy Mack did an amazing, amazing job. And it really caught my attention, especially over the course of the last year. And so I just, again, I want to talk about kind of what the show meant to me, but mainly what the show meant for kids and how television shows should model kind of this going forward. The show explores a lot of things. Asian culture, Jewish culture, the cast is very naturally diverse. We get to explore again different religions, different ethnicities, different sexualities, which is the first time that that has ever been done on Disney Channel. We've had one appearance by an LGBT character on Disney Channel before, and that was in Good Luck Charlie. Charlie, the little girl, uh, was having a play date and her friend's mothers came to pick her up, and it was just a lesbian couple that came to pick her up, and that got insane, insane backlash. Many years later, it has been kind of a journey. Uh, <laughs> as many people know, LGBT representation is few and far between, and now that it's getting more frequent, it's getting pretty sloppy on a lot of shows. A lot of shows aren't doing it right. They are just having tokenism. And when I say that, it's like, you can't just throw in an LGBT romance and have it be like there and then this flashy thing, but not do any of the work into, which is what it entails, you know? And it's not even a lot of the time given the same attention or respect that the straight couples on, on shows are given. And so I think what's amazing about Andy Mack is particularly regarding the sexuality topic is and I and I bring this up mainly because it has gotten a lot of attention because of course this is the first Disney Channel show to have a main character come out as gay and that alone the fact that it took until 2017 is rough i did not get a show like this growing up i did i didn't get anything like this growing up i got not even girl meets world which is like a really deep show but that came out when i was in high school 
was kind of overly deep to a point where it was corny. But I think Annie Mac, what's so great about it is that it's not corny. I mean, it's like Disney Channel level fluff, but it's it's not, it, it takes itself seriously and therefore people can take it seriously. The creator of Andy Mac is also the creator of Lizzie McGuire. But I grew up with, and I, I freaking love these shows, so don't think I'm stomping on them or whatever. I loved them. I, I, I still love them. I would still watch them if they were available to me. Fingers crossed for Disney Plus. But I grew up with Hannah Montana, That's So Raven, Phil the Future, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Wizards of Waverly Place, Good Luck Charlie. I was on the cusp, I was on the back end of some shows like Phil of the Future. Like it was like one of its last seasons was when I was getting into Disney Channel at like the age of six. So I was born in 1999 to give you guys some sort of perspective. Again, I'm 20 years old. So, but I never got anything uh, like Andy Mack in terms of the representation. And the two things that are most important to me on this show in terms of the topics they covered are panic attacks and sexuality because those two things have been huge parts of my life especially in the last few years and panic more dating back a little bit more and so if I had had a show as a kid that taught me while I was growing up. I was okay, I was normal, I was going to survive, I would be okay tomorrow. The struggles I was going through were not end all be all and they were something that also, not only that, but something that deserved my attention and that I didn't have to be afraid to think about or to hide from it. Uh, I'm not making this video about my personal experiences with said two topics, but I do think that having a show like that would have been so important for my generation which is like we are so so like the mental health of my generation is just absolute trash and i think there's a lot of factors going into that but having a show that I, that taught us that we were okay uh, when we were kids, I think that just would have been so nice. But for generations right now, and I, obviously people can, I know a lot of um, people who are not in the age demographic for Andy Max still watch the show. And I think it's just it's just nice that the kids now though, they, they got a show like Andy Max. The first thing I'll talk about uh, anxiety or whatever specifically Jonah Beck as a character had but he suffered from panic attacks and the way the people calmed him down or addressed it or were able to just, the way he learned from his experiences with it. And honestly, honest to God, Cyrus tells Jonah that I know it feels like you're gonna die, but you're not going to, you're safe. And like, he says something like that. And oh my God, if I had had that, I mean, it would have saved me so much pain. Just one moment, just that one scene would have saved me from so much pain. We don't get taught things when we're kids because our parents don't want us, they want us to be sheltered and to have a nice innocent childhood. And to many, many degrees, that is great. That is so amazing and it's so nice when we're a kid. But when we grow up, there's a lot of things that we don't know about and that we're very confused about. And the fact that a show could could dive into those things, just like, I know a lot of parents have backlash for Andy Mac, but it really lessens the blow when your kids actually go through those things because they will, and they're probably already going through it. Mental health is a problem from when you can, your whole childhood, sexuality, that's your whole life too. It's not something that just comes on. It's not, it's not like that. And to, to feel like you're othered by just simply the fact that you're not represented in that show and it's not even a conscious thing. I didn't realize that I wasn't being represented. I'm a, I was a white girl, I, I, I was, thought I was completely represented and so I had no problem with it until I realized now what I wasn't getting as a kid and I realize now how important all of that stuff would have been to me. So panic attack stuff uh, was huge for me. Again, I love, I absolutely love how they educated about um, like the Jewish religion. That was amazing and just different families and and then the sexuality thing because we can't not talk about Cyrus Goodman who is officially I think one of my favorite TV character or just characters of all time ever because he's just so amazing and this is 
crazy for me to be talking about because it's a kids show and I don't talk about kids shows on my channel. I talk about movies and stuff, but this just, wow. Okay, so, okay, so it's, it's kind of obvious. I haven't, obviously, I have not been able to watch every episode of Andy Mac because it's not available all for free, which is annoying, but I've watched what I can watch and I've watched clips of episodes that I can't uh, that I can't access, but in the in season two, Cyrus comes out to his friend Buffy. Now, when I say comes out, I mean it's it's absolutely a beautiful moment and it's so emotional and so amazing. This is the first time a main a character has ever come out on Disney Channel, and obviously it's very it was very much a struggle for the character in the moment that it was happening. He was crying. It was like hard and it's, it's honestly hard to watch it's hard to watch someone be in pain especially if it's a child and so he came out he never explicitly said i have a crush on a boy or i'm gay or i like boys or anything he never it, it was never explicitly said like that it was done in a very very respectful way for like the character too he said he he was kind of having this conversation with his friend and she said, and she realized their best friend Andy, the namesake of the show, and Jonah Beck, the popular boy, he was jealous of that relationship. And so he confirmed that and then Buffy realizes that he's not jealous um, because he likes Andy, he's jealous because he likes Jonah. And she says, you like Jonah. And he nods and he says, Buffy, I feel weird, different. And she says, Cyrus, you've always been weird, but you're no different which is absolutely beautiful. And I think if they had to do it in any way, and I, I do feel like this scene was pretty censored, um, if they had to do it in the way, like it, it was so beautiful. And then he comes out again in basically kind of almost the same way uh, to Andy. And then finally, in February, 2019, he finally, finally was able to use the words, for the first time, the word gay was used on Disney Channel and he was allowed to say, I'm gay, when he came out to Jonah. And all the while, I think since season two, they introduce a character who's a jock, mean, and then the only person he gets along with is Cyrus. And even as this character has an arc and becomes more likable and nice to everyone, the whole time, he really only interacts with Cyrus and with Buffy, Buffy being the person he had a feud with to begin with, but even when that feud ends, he really only interacts with Cyrus. And this was clearly becoming the new kind of like endgame ship for, I'm just getting so happy thinking about it. To a casual observer, it could have been just friendship. How Cyrus behaved with this new character TJ and how he behaved with Jonah when he had a crush on him. They paralleled that very nicely and subtly so that if you were a fan, and you you didn't like have your heteronormative lenses on, you would see that there's something going on between the two of them. But if you had your heteronormative lenses on, like most of us do most of the time, you would notice that they're just friends. So it's it was, the line was blurred, you know? It could have gone either way. And then as the seasons went on, and then specifically the last few episodes of the final season, season three, it started to get a bit more romantic. The bro hugs when it were swapped with actual hugs. They would look into each other's eyes. When they're walking next to each other, they're brushing shoulders. The way that most male characters on Disney Channel shows do not interact with each other. And it was just subtle things like that, where they were warming up the audience, warming them up slowly to the idea of these two characters being in a relationship. And finally, when they've been teasing the finale, in the promos they've been advertising these two characters as a couple. Honestly, I saw that made me cry <laughs> because it, it makes me so happy. And it makes me so happy that kids get that now and not just kids, but us who, like people like us who, not only, it's not even fully about the fact that we didn't get it as kids, but we don't really get it now. There's so, so many stories about LGBTQIAP plus people that are just absolutely butchered in the media because they're meant to be tokened or it's queer baiting or just 
gay coding, but nothing ever leads to anything. And it's so freaking painful sometimes. And I've always felt very invested in it. It can be done well and it can be done right. And there are some examples of it that are just so, so good. Again, they, they've, they've, they've took their time and meticulously and carefully built these two um, as not only close friends, but of something more. Uh, and their friendship was beautiful and you knew you trusted them as a pairing that they were good together and they had a good dynamic because we'd seen them as friends for two, two whole seasons and they only really interacted with each other. And so that's two seasons of warming your audience up and it's the best way they could have done it on Disney Channel. And then again, they start advertising them and that blows my mind. Just absolutely blows my mind. And I just cannot, I just cannot believe that they did it so well. And then finally in this episode, I wish we could have seen them pass that scene. I wish, I really wish there was more. They didn't say explicitly. Okay, so like, it, they're kind of, the moment when their relationship became canon, like they're a couple now. And Terry Minsky did it a just a fantastic job with it and the fact that they held hands was so beautiful I'll actually insert a clip of me so I took it about like 10 minutes after I found out the information so I went on tumblr today because I forgot that some people get to watch the episode early and I actually could have watched the episode a day early too but I chose not to because I wanted to watch it live which was like the most torturous thing. I didn't open up my laptop all day and I really wanted to click it, but I didn't. And so I, I cried. Um, and then I recorded this video of my reaction to seeing a gif on Tumblr of them holding hands. So this is that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, so, so happy right now. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I have been giddy all day thinking about this moment. I don't like that it was spoiled for me, but at the same time I kind of do because I was probably having like heart palpitations over there on the couch. I was freaking out. I've not been a watcher of Andy Mac for a long time, or for the whole time even, but as someone who studies screenwriting and writing and film and television in college, I have an enormous respect for this show and the way that it was created and written and done, just carried out in general. I just feel honored that I actually was able to watch this episode live. I didn't just make this video to talk about it, and what it is because I'm sure there are Andy Mac fans watching this video, oh, hopefully, and they already know everything I just told you. I kind of did all the explaining for people who don't know and who haven't watched it. And I'm not telling any of you guys to go watch Andy Mac because A, it's over now and I don't even know if it's available. You'd have to make a Disney Now account, which is basically signing yourself up to watch Disney Channel, which is... <sighs> But <laughs> unless they introduce another insanely well-written show like this, I'm done watching Disney Channel for good. But the bottom line is I really wanted to make this video because I want people to learn from this show. And in many respects, I am so, so glad that I am a writer and that I can learn from this show and that I can learn from people's responses to it in terms of how to better represent things and how to this, this show has made me want to watch, made me want to write children's programming, which is bizarre. And I don't want to only write Disney Channel. But I would, wa I would write a show for Disney Channel. Like, I would actually consider doing <laughs> Not that they would ever buy it or that it would ever air, but for fun, maybe. Because to me, Disney Channel has always been... I mean, I loved it as a kid, and kids love it when they're kids. But when you grow up, you realize how censored it is and how not deep it is. And I really wanted to tell stories and make a difference with my writing. But I see with Andy Mack that that can be done. The biggest takeaways I want people to take away from this show are that diversity can be natural. 
in your cast, it can be completely natural, but it can't be tokenism. Those are important topics to have and they will never, I will never get, no, people won't get tired of hearing them be told. People are like, okay, this show is one gay character, why do they need another one? Or the show has a black person in it, why do, why do they need to go into all the deep stuff? What's well, important because these characters reflect real life and they reflect the real world and if you turn a blind eye to how the world impacts who they are as a character because of their religion, their ethnicity, sexuality, race, that is not like you you need to acknowledge it and it was so well done because and it was so natural because it just made sense for these characters because you can't just say this is part of their identity and have them never live it out. That's that's what tokenism is. You can't have the character and not do the work. Which segues me into if Disney does more sexuality related stuff. And this is the most important topic, I think, because it's so delicate and so fragile and so many people are still so not okay with it. And even if they're okay with it, they're uncomfortable by the idea of it or they're, they're, they think they're okay with it until someone in their life or until it's them. The way Andy Mack built to it, they built to it, they earned that handhold, they earned Cyrus saying he was gay, they earned him coming out, they earned everything they got in this series, they earned it. And if you make a show, I doubt anyone from Disney Channel is watching this, but if you make a show, you need to do the work. You can't just say, if there's, next time they have an LGBT character on Disney Channel, they can't just have them start off as, as, as gay and just have a boyfriend, especially if they're middle schoolers. It's just not realistic. The hardest part about being in the LGBT community um, is that hurdle of coming out, of, com of realizing how you feel and what your feelings are and the fact that it's okay and the fact that you're not alone and going through that experience and 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 as kids you can't neglect that part of the story because that's the part of the story they need to see that's the growing up part that's the maturing part that's the being shaped as a human part that literally is what children's programming is supposed to talk about the growing part the part where you grow you learn lessons and that's you can't skip that. We And there are so, so, so many things that we didn't get in Andy Mac that I know they probably would have given us had there been more seasons, had it not been canceled. But we didn't get it. We didn't get Cyrus coming out to his family. We didn't get any sort of negative reaction to him being a member of the community. We didn't even get him and TJ as an established couple for more than three seconds. But we did get what we got, and what we got, they built to. Again, you, maybe you don't have to spend three seasons building to it, but you do have to do the work, and you have to realize that what you put on these shows has weight. And especially if you're dealing with something that can be attributed with so much trauma. And unfortunately, the LGBT community has gone through so much trauma, and they still do, in the same way that certain races do and certain religions do. It's not an easy world out there. And kids need to know that if they're struggling with these things on the inside, things they can't change, that they will be okay. And that there are people out there that care about them and that are there for them. And the only way to show them that is to put it in their children's programming. And that is so freaking important. And I cannot believe that it took until 2019 to get a gay couple on Disney Channel. I can't believe it took until 2019 to get the word gay on Disney Channel, but it did. And it took until 2017 to get a character to come out, a main character. And there are always going to be people who disagree with those decisions and parents who are going to get upset about it. But the bottom line is that you're doing this for the kids and the kids need this even if their parents think that they don't. And I'm saying this as a kid who didn't get it. I don't know how much more reliable of a source I can be. And I know kids that watch that show that have been able to come out because of it. I know kids that have dealt with many things and feel more confident in who they are. The ratings show it. 
Andy Mack was the most popular show on Disney Channel by a long shot for the entirety of the span that it was on. And it's popular for a reason. It's important for a reason. It won awards for a reason. This show is important. And I wish it could go to Disney Plus. I wish it could continue so badly. And honestly, I'm hoping for it. But it can't end here. They need to do more. There are kids out there that are still growing up and just because they did it once doesn't mean they can't keep doing it. These things need to be accessible for children. The world is a complicated place and these conversations cannot be ignored, especially for kids now. And it's important that kids know that they are loved. That's just so important and I don't understand how, how anyone could not recognize that importance. So I'm gonna end this video. I'm very proud of Andy Mack. I'm proud of Cyrus Goodman. I'm very proud of Terry Minsky for how well she handled this show. I'm sure that uh, she had to fight for a lot of stuff that ended up on the show. But overall, I think it was just such a beautiful example of what children's programming can be and what representation for certain communities can be. And I think not just Disney Channel, but more just more media in general needs to learn from the Cyrus storyline because it's so good. <laughs> and I feel so happy and now I need to go on social media and just live in a world of euphoria for a minute because I'm so happy. Okay, that's all I have to say. Please let me know in the comments down below if you've seen Andy Mac or your thoughts on anything I just said. Share this video, please, if you um, want to, and just to just to extend the conversation to to raise awareness for how important this show was. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked Andy Mac, and subscribe if you want to see more of my coverage on this YouTube channel going forward. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.